Welcome to the video. I'm really, really excited you clicked it. We're gonna tell you all about our first ever college nationals experience, the 2023 NCAA Cross Country Championships in Charlottesville, Virginia. It's gonna be exciting. We're gonna go through everything, our experience, the team experience, throughout the season, what we're looking forward to, what we did bad, what we could do better. It's gonna be great. Sound like Welcome to our Nationals video. Uh, I assume a lot of people have been waiting for this one. Um, it's interesting, it's fun. It's our first, it'll go over our first NCAA cross country championship. That's super exciting. Um, and I think it'll also kind of be a bit reflective on the season, um, everything that we accomplished, everything we would have hoped to accomplish and things that we think we did well and what we want to work on. So um, it should be a really good video. Uh, this, the, the, the structure of it's a little different than most. We're, um, we're discussing a lot of it now after the fact. I think it's good. It gives us time to resonate on our thoughts and figure out exactly what we want to say um, and hopefully create a, a better video that better reflects what we think, right? Yeah. All right, so let's just get started with it. The meet itself, the 2023 NCAA Cross Country Championships. Um, I will say it was quite an honor to get to compete in that um, my freshman year. Um, a lot of freshmen red shirt, a lot of freshmen um, aren't lucky enough to, to make the team coming, but. their freshman year. So we were both super fortunate to get to be on that um, NCAA national team this year. Um, and it was a really, it was a really great experience. No, it was really, really cool to be there. And I guess there we should probably talk about is Virginia. It was in, uh, it was, UVA was the host and it was at Panorama Farms. It's this actually really beautiful venue, it's just this huge farm where they have the course just kind of looping around. It's, uh, it's basically like, you kind of have a perimeter type loop and then you have these inner 2K loops that you do. So you kind of go out and do the extension and then enter the 2K loops and you do, I think, what, three of those? Something like that. Uh, like three of those and then you go back around and just do go the around the loop. perimeter again and then you come back into the finish. It was a, I thought it, the course itself was, I mean, it was grueling, but it was definitely very well designed and very well put together. So uh, props to the course itself. It was a nice course to compete at. Of course, we had already raced there at the UVA Invitational earlier in the season, which we didn't make a video about, but was a really fun race and was, uh, I guess, our first college cross country race. Um, yeah. Yeah. On to the actual, uh, I guess, the actual event itself. Man. 10K cross country is a, it's a whole different beast than high school. Um, even the 8K in general, I think that like throughout the course of the season, I had some good runs at it, some bad runs at it. Um, it's a tough thing, but it's definitely something that we'll, we'll, we'll stand to learn and get good at throughout our time in college. At least we really sure do plan to and plan to work towards. Um, but it's a very tough thing. The first time I ran at Virginia, it was a pretty decent race. I worked pretty hard. I had a lot left in the tank. I came off a terrific summer buildup where I'd put in um, a lot of great miles, a lot of great workouts and all that. So I was feeling really fit. Um, then midway through the season, um, I think we discussed this in other videos, my appendix just burst, which was really frustrating. Um, Cause that's like a, I mean, that's like a, that's a huge setback, right? Yeah. Your appendix burst in the middle of the season. You got nothing, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just sitting there in the hospital bed thinking, man, when can I finally get on my feet again and run? Um, my, it, it, what was it? It burst since the surgery was like on a Friday. I had, a, I like basically was immobile for a week. The next Sunday I went for a run. Um, so I, I tried biked to the hospital at 3 Yeah, I tried, I tried to get back on the horse as quick as possible possible um, because I'm just I'm just not someone who likes to be um, slowed down by something like that you know so I was super stoked to be able to get back to it getting back to it I felt like I had lost so much fitness I was going for runs and I'm like holy moly why is my heart rate 170 so like it was it was not it was not it wasn't it wasn't easy trying to get back I felt like I really did a good job of bouncing back the best I could um, and it was at a time where a team really my team really needed me and I was like really set on um, getting back to a point where I was healthy and fit enough to contribute again. Um, I think I did a really good job of that at, at regionals, um, which was 
I guess it's seven, like eight, no, eight days before nationals. It's on a Friday. Nationals is on the next Saturday. Um, so like eight days, eight days before nationals was regionals. I think I ran really well there. I was something like, I want to say 26th place. Um, and it was a good race. It was a tough race. It was my first 10K. I didn't feel particularly fit during that race. I felt like I had a lot of grit and a lot of built up energy to kind of grind through it. Unfortunately, that was not the case at the national meet. Um, I think that because I was kind of running on a lot less fitness than I kind of needed for it, I had a lot, I didn't have as much in the tank at the NCAA meet as I had at the regional meet because I had spent so much there trying to, um, you know, solidify our team's position in our region to make sure that we got to nationals. Um, so when it came to the NCAA meet, I will say I kind of felt dead from the start. Weather's changing. We've had a little storm lately. Um, yeah. So the race for me, I think a lot of people can relate to getting off the line in a race and just feeling totally dead. Um, I think we all can agree it's not a fun feeling. Um, it's really demoralizing and in a 10K I found it especially demoralizing because you start thinking to yourself, how am I going to get through this race? How am I going to get through this race? And then the negative thoughts start flooding in and it's a really difficult process to keep your head in the game, keep your body fighting. And, and to stay in the, the actual race and compete, you know? I found myself going backwards pretty quick, um, and that was really hard. I think that a big thing was that one, a whole bunch of you guys, a whole bunch of uh, you guys who cheer us on were there cheering us on. That was awesome. Hearing a lot of people calling my name saying, come on, Leo, come on. That, that was tremendously helpful. Uh, my parents, my family, everyone was there cheering Holy. me on. My whole team was working hard. I knew everyone on my team was Dude, going through it. What do you I got, a B? A, a B in my arm. A bee in his on shoes. That's crazy. Like, flick that thing off because I don't want to get bit. Did they get it? Yeah. You okay. Got it. I'm yeah. allergic to bees, so. Yeah, Lex is really allergic to bees. So, yeah, fortunately, I had a whole bunch of people cheering me on. I knew my teammates were in the race too, so I really tried my hardest to uh, to stay in the race and stay as focused as possible. I was able to make up a few positions um, towards the end. I think I, I my last K was a lot quicker than the bulk of the race because I finally got my head back in it. I found that, um, and this hopefully is good advice for anyone else who can relate to this. Once you, if you can get your head back in the game, if you can get your head to. Um, to start clicking with it and start, and you can convince yourself that that you can do this. If you can actually, if you can actually believe in yourself during the race, you can really start to make a lot of change. And for me, that was about um, eight kilometers into the race where I finally believed in myself again, and I started moving, um, moving up in position again, and and making progress, which was um, which was super important. And that's what. Um, Made it so I finished the race, not necessarily thinking it was a terrible race, not super happy with it, but at least I was able to get gain a lot from it. And um, like any race that you're not particularly thrilled with, you gotta figure out what you can learn from it. And that's really what I learned from it, is just like kind of experiencing the process of losing your head in the race and then gaining it again and trying to, and using it to, and trying to get your mind on your side to push through. Totally. I actually think, uh, contrary to Leo, I actually think I had a very good race. It was, I mean, it wasn't like out of this world by any means, but I was proud of the effort I put in and I was proud of uh, the position that I came away with. It, um, like any race, uh, it, it still left me, you know, wanting more because that's just kind of how running is. I don't think you're ever fully satisfied after a race, but from the gun, I knew it was gonna hurt. Coming, after, coming off of regionals, I was really, uh, it was my second 10K, so I was trying to, you know, make improvements off the, you know, analysis off of what I had come up with from the regionals race. So going to the nationals race, I knew from the gun it was gonna go really fast. Like, I, like at regionals we went out and I think 4.30 maybe, so I knew it was gonna go out that quick or even quicker. So I was ready for that. I mean, you can say you're ready for that, but it's hard to actually be ready for that. I tried my best to be ready for that. We went out in, I think, 235, 236 maybe uh, for the first K. Uh, yeah, I know was, I was 234, which is insane. Yeah, and that's like... The front runners quick. are 229. Yeah, that's really quick. So, uh, yeah, to put that in perspective, that's like, I'm, isn't that like 24 minute 10K pace? Or like it's 20, four minute, two, oh yeah, two, it's like, 230 for a K is four minute pace. Yeah, so that's like almost four minute per mile pace. So like, it's legitimately like, you're going quick, you're moving. So no matter how fit you are, that's gonna do some damage. So uh, that definitely was tough, but I knew, you know, you, from what my coach was telling me, like, yeah, I'm hurting, but everyone else around me just went through that K that same speed. Like, they're hurting too. I just need to make sure that I can hurt a little bit more than them and that I can just keep maintaining. So 
after that first K and I'm going really, really quick, you know, you're obviously you're wanting to slow down. So I am letting myself slow down a little bit because it's unrealistic to hold four minute miles for a 10K. But I'm trying to kind of like manage that in a way where I can still be progressing in the field itself. And I think I did a decently good job at that. It's something I'd been working on throughout the season, but kind of just progressing, you know, five, six people per, per uh, I don't know if they, I think the splits were per K uh, on this race, but yeah, per K. So I think that's some pretty good progress. I came away with, I think all green arrows, except for maybe that, maybe that like third K, but and that's something I'm pretty proud of because that just shows forward movement throughout the whole race. I think I was in maybe like 115th, 120th from the first K and then I think I finished around 85th, something around there, which is, I think is, uh, it's pretty, it, it's pretty impressive. And I think I'm definitely proud of that. It was, if you look at the results, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe I was the first uh, true American freshman. So. I guess excluding foreigners and excluding redshirt freshmen. Looking forward after this race, uh, I'm just hoping to use all of what I've learned from from the 10K into next season. You know, trying to alter a little things to prepare myself better. It's when you're racing twice the distance that you did before. It's really hard to like to really nail it. So it's something that's always going to be a process. But I believe that uh, there's a couple things that I could probably do. Uh, in preparation next year that would definitely put myself in a better position so I think uh, I think yeah I feel very very excited for the future all right to shift notes a little bit I'd like to talk a little bit about this thing uh, the Miata so yeah you probably saw it in the intro uh, some of you maybe don't enjoy cars and are probably like why are they showing cars in this video but we actually really enjoy cars I think they're fun to drive they're fun to look at they're fun to research they're just it, it's an interesting thing to get into so for those of you that you do enjoy cars and automotives and trucks or whatever uh, yeah it's a pretty cool thing we um, we picked it up over Thanksgiving break it's not by no means is it like a expensive or crazy or high performance car it's from 1996 it has a four cylinder engine it doesn't even push out more than 200 horsepower it's actually far below that it's like 130 i believe but um it's fun it's a manual it's got nice weight distribution it's it's agile it's small it's a convertible so it's more about the pleasure of driving so yeah we've been having a lot of fun with it it's been an opportunity to get out on the road more and kind of enjoy uh joy driving for driving not necessarily to get anywhere but just to just to have some fun to re have some relief from the stresses of the world so uh yeah uh, we we've been enjoying it Thank you guys for watching. I hope that it was entertaining. I hope that you learned something or just had fun watching it. So please, we'll see you guys in the next one. That's good.